Welcome to Community Taking Action, ABCD's program highlighting people and organizations doing great things in and around the Boston area. Today we're going to go straight to the heart of the matter and get someone representing the city, Tula Mall, the Deputy Commissioner of Policy and Communications of the Elderly Commission of the City of Boston. Welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. So I say that because we really cover a number of programs with folks all around Boston, but working for the Elderly Commission, you get to see all of it and really address Elder, elders and elderly programs. Talk a little bit about the commission and the work that you do. So first of all, thank you for having us. We always like to talk about what we're doing at the Commission on Affairs of the Elderly. Um, and obviously we know that you guys do great work at ABCD and we're thank partners you. on a lot of things actually. Um, so a little bit about the commission. So we are the Area Agency on Aging and the Council on Aging for the City of Boston. Those are two designations that uh, basically are a flow of money from federal and state um, and the state government. But we also do a lot of other things. Um, we host over 100 events throughout the year um, in different neighborhoods uh, for older adults living in the city of Boston, free, usually a lunch and dancing. And then also we have uh, information referral uh, advocates, and they are designated to different neighborhoods in the city of Boston. And their role is to help uh, older adults one-on-one -on -one with any issues they have. May it be, um, you know, they need, someone needs help with SNAP benefits or any benefits, government, you know, filling out applications. They may have an issue with, in the winter especially, I mean, this winter was pretty tough, mm -hmm. running out of heat. Um, I mean, you, whatever question may come up, the advocates uh, deal with people one-on-one. -on -one. Anything that may, as an older adult may say, like, I'm having trouble, you know, getting this resolved, or I don't know, I need a resource. Like, I, I, I don't know, I don't know anything about, you know, how to understand my, my medical, my health information. We at least would, this, you know, this advocate would refer to them, uh, talk to them for a while, and then refer them out to wherever, if needed be. A problem solved. Exactly. We have a property tax work-off program, a way for older adults to work off up to $1,000 on their property taxes. Mm -hmm. So that program's getting geared up right now. Uh, and we have uh, the RSVP program and the Senior Companion program, which are our two federally funded programs. The RSVP program is for people over, over the age of 55, and um, we have different opportunities for them. So. Mm -hmm. We have older adults working in, partner, we've partnered up with different agencies throughout the city where we have them doing different volunteer uh, projects. Um, our Senior Companion Program, also federally funded, and this is a really interesting program. So this program matches up um, people over the age of 55 with other older adults living in the city who may be frail um, to help them continue to live independently and um, li continue living in their communities. Oh, we also have the shuttle, of course. Uh, we provide rides to older adults uh, from their homes to their medical appointments Monday through Friday, um, you know, that's business that, hours. But that's distinct from the ride. That's distinct from the ride, yeah. Really? This is city, city funded. Uh, transportation for medical, not a medical emergencies, but medical appointments. Well, I mean, that's a regular thing, you know, as you age, yep. you go, I mean, if you're Getting, not aging, you go to a lot of appointments. Absolutely. And then we also offer half price taxi coupons. For $5, you get $10 worth of coupons, and every month you can purchase up to $20, which is $10 mm -hmm. out of your pocket. It's a way to, disc to offer discounted transportation options for older adults. So I am hearing a lot of things that I'm, I'm like, wow, that's a really good program. Wow, that's really interesting. The, I know we'll come back to it later, but mm -hmm. you can just go to one location and get all of this information. And you know, whether I'm looking for myself or looking for one of my parents or grandparent, I can just find it on the city's website. Absolutely. So our website is cityofboston.gov slash elderly. People also can come to City Hall. Uh, we are located in room 271 and ask the receptionist to, you know, connect you to whoever it is that you may be wanting to speak to. More than likely, you will be uh, connected with an advocate. Aging adults, elderly, we use the term a lot. What are the, how do you qualify to be elderly or aging? Or when should I begin to get concerned about getting these programs? So that is so interesting that you say that because we think about that a lot. So. The word elderly, a lot of older adults, and I don't use that word, I use the word older adult. Um, older adults probably like the greatest generation, the World War II generation, they don't mind that terminology. It's because the terminology they grew up with and it, it speaks to them. But I would say baby boomers, um, the younger older adults, to them that word elderly just doesn't, 
doesn't speak to them, right? A lot of these programs that I mentioned are for people 55 years and older. 55 that's is not young. old. That's no. Right. That's right. So to say that they're elderly, I mean, I think there's connotations with that word that um, you know a lot of people don't connect with. So I think older adult uh, is a better term. It is. But you know, I think we could. I think that needs. That's a bigger conversation about what we should be using. Uh, in Latin America, they say. Um, uh, personas de tercera edad, which translates to the third age, which nice. I really like. That is nice. I don't. I wish we. That My would mother's catch seventy, on. and she just doesn't go for old. You know, when she goes to the senior center mm -hmm. and she works out with the old people, I laugh. But you know, she just doesn't see herself as old, and so I always am cautious. You know, Absolutely. around the term when working with. Elders, my my elders sometimes is how I like to refer to it, mm -hmm. you know, or my senior, yeah. because then I can get away with it. You know, they're senior or elder to yeah. me. Those seem like really strong, significant programs. So I want to touch on them one more time. Mm -hmm. Just just walk me through it slowly. The the property tax program. Sure. So the property tax work off program has eligibility requirements. Must be age sixty or older by July first, twenty fifteen. Um, income, there is income eligibility, income eligibility. Uh, 30000 if you're applying as a single person, forty five if you're applying as a married couple. You must own the property and be living in the property that you're applying for for three years. Outstanding. And then RSVP, you know. So now I'll think very differently when I'm responding to the invitations for I events. Know. I like to think of it as RSVP for the rest of your life. Okay. You know, so like something for people to do who have retired or maybe who have just scaled down their work. Mm -hmm. What are they doing now? What's their next thing? Um, so, like I said, we have a lot of a lot of different opportunities. We have sixteen, at least sixteen sites, maybe more. I think, uh, where people can volunteer at. Uh, they can be matched up with a group of older adults where they talk to them one on one and just keep them engaged in their community. We have people teaching English as a second language. Uh, right now, we're really recruiting for uh, uh, this program with ITN. We're uh, partners with them to provide rides for older adults, so free rides. And as a volunteer, some of the benefits you get is you earn credit so that one day when you're not necessarily uh, able to drive anymore, you can use those credits through this program. Or you can give them to someone else who may need them. Um, so that's what we're really recruiting for. Obviously, we recruit for the SHINE program, so it's a way to, for older adults uh, who have very complicated health insurance policies to understand their policies. Um, and then um, food delivery. So we're working with Elders Living at Home program. It's a program through Boston Medical Center um, to match people up where they will deliver packages of food to these people's homes um, who necessarily can't get out. So there is more here than I think we can ever get across in the program. And as we're up against the break, I just want to say thank you very much for coming on and giving us just this, I think it's a, an appetizer for mm -hmm. the, really all of the work that the commission is doing. And so I want to thank you for being on the program. That concludes our program for today. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you've missed any episodes, you can catch them on YouTube. Thank you for joining our program. This is Community Taking Action. I am your host, Eric Mitchell. Until next time.